Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, if you ever thought about learning how LoRa WAN works and got put off because of the intricate setup of hardware and backend software, then look no further. Now, in this video, we'll take a look at a fairly new LoRa package sold by Seed Studio, and it's the SenseCamp LoRa WAN Starter Kit. Now, for those of you that either haven't heard of LoRa or know how it works technically, then let me briefly explain. Now, LoRa essentially stands for long range, and it uses a proprietary radio communication technique based on spread spectrum. Now, LoRa uses unlicensed frequency bands, so there's no issue with anyone using LoRa without a license, because there isn't one for the standard LoRa frequencies. Now, here in the UK and Europe, we use around 868 MHz, while in the North and South America, including Asia, use around 915 MHz, so just make sure you order any LoRa kit that's suitable for your region. Okay, so now we know technically what LoRa is, but what can it do? Now LoRa WAN, which essentially stands for Long Range Wide Area Network, is a cluster of LoRa WAN gateways set up around the world. Now these are normally found in people's homes or set up up on top of hilltops. They're also installed and put together by LoRa enthusiasts. However, there is a massive commercial interest in these projects, which also use the same network. Now on the left on this slide, we have our sensors or end devices. Now these are the devices which take a measurement and then transmit that measurement data to a LoRa WAN gateway. Now the end devices can be anything from GPS trackers to temperature sensors, light sensors, door sensors, well, the list goes on. Now, once a LoRa gateway receives a packet from an end device, it will forward it to the network server, which that gateway has been configured to. An application will then sit querying the network server for any of the sensor's data. This can be in the form of a web app, a mobile app, or even a desktop application. A popular network server is the Things Network, which I'm sure if you've heard of IoT, i.e. Internet of Things, then you would have heard of the Things Network. The M2 multi-platform gateway, which is included in this LoRaWAN starter kit, is set up to send its data to the SenseCap network server. However, this can be changed to forward to any server of your choice, and I'll cover that in another video. But in this video, we'll use the SenseCap network server, as it's the most easiest to set up with this kit. Now in the box, we find a magnetic antenna base, a mains power supply to power the gateway, the gateway itself, and of course, an antenna. Now the antenna itself just screws onto the magnetic base and the other end of the cable plugs into the M2 gateway by an SMA connection. On one side of the gateway, we have the power socket, an ethernet socket, a USB-C console socket, a reset button, along with a micro SDR card slot and some LED indicators. Now in the model I received, there is no LTE nano SIM socket. So this gateway will rely on the internet provided by the ethernet socket or the onboard Wi-Fi, which obviously then connects to your home internet. On the other side, we just have one SMA socket and that's where you connect your LoRa antenna. As this is a starter kit, there are a range of sensors included. Now first up is this little board where all of the sensors plug into. Now you do get a little ESP32-S3 board included, which needs to have the headers soldered on before you can attach it to this board. We then have a LoRa E5 board, which is the LoRa transmitter and receiver. This also plugs into the little breakout board I showed you a moment ago. Then we have a temperature and humidity sensor. Again, this plugs into that breakout board with the supplied cable. Now the last sensor in the kit is a soil moisture sensor. Again, this plugs into that breakout board using the supplied cable. Now there's lots of other different sensors that you can purchase separately, but to get you started, these are gonna be the most easiest to set up and actually see some data, whether it's on a web app or a mobile phone app. Now at this stage, you have two choices. You can either set up an account through their website or set up an account on your mobile device. Now I would, however, recommend to use the mobile app as it's so much easier and quicker. So with the SenseCap app downloaded from the App Store, 
use the register button to create an account. Once you have a registered account, sign into the SenseCap app on your mobile device. You will now need to add the LoRa transmitter board as a device. This will bring in all of the sensors that are attached to that little breakout board. Tap on the top green plus button on the top right. The app will now use your camera so that you can scan the little square QR code that's printed on the label on the rear of the LoRa board. Now, as soon as the app has read the contents of the QR code, the device's details will be shown on the screen. Tap the bind to account button located towards the bottom. Now this will bind your LoRa transmitter and sensors to your account. You can now tap on the device and view the sensors data like this. You can go through each of the sensors data. Now over time, the data will start to accumulate and you can go back through and look at historical data. So what do you think? How quick and easy was that? Now, another cool thing you can do is actually add the LoRa WAN gateway as a device on the app. Now, this is so that you can check if the gateway is actually online and connected to the SenseCap servers. Just add it the same way as we did for the sensors, and you'll see it listed in the device list. If we now move over to the web portal, we can sign in using the same credentials as we did on the mobile app. And once logged in, we'll see that the devices are already added. Now on the left side of the menu, you can select the sensor node and then just select that particular node. If you head to the data tab, you should see some data, same as what was shown on the app. Now I have quite a bit shown here because I've had it running a while. The dashboard can be customized by adding measurements to a scene. You can also add charts, which can be shown as a line or a bar graph. Now this is a great visual historical view at a quick glance. Now Seed Studio have lots of other sensors which are compatible with this system. So if you're interested, go and check out their website. I'll leave a link below in the description of this video as usual. So what if you wanted to use this gateway with another network server, like the Things Network? Well, that's easy. But for this, you will need to access the control panel of the actual gateway using a browser. The login credentials are listed on the serial number sticker on the bottom of the gateway hardware. Once logged in, go to the LoRa tab and change the mode from SenseCap to Packet Forwarder. The Things Network server details will already be filled in, so just click on Save and Apply. Now, of course, you will need a Things Network account and you will need to bind your end devices to your account. Now I do plan on making another video in the near future to show you how you can use this LoRaWAN gateway with the Things Network. Well, there we go, guys. That's the LoRaWAN starter kit from Seed Studio. Now tell me, what do you think about that? In my opinion, that was really easy. Now I haven't personally experimented much with LoRa, especially LoRaWAN, but for me, it's a great introduction to setting up my own LoRaWAN gateway. Plus, it's given me lots of inspiration and an urge to learn more about it and what can be done with it. Until the next video, guys, take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.